اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Many people are confused with this idea where they say why God wants me to do certain things or live my life a certain way when it's my life and my body. Why should I follow God's commandments? I should be able to freely follow my own impulses. If this is the way you think, you are basically making a claim of ownership on your body and your life. Let's dissect this claim and see how much of it actually makes sense. Let's take the example of a rental car. If you need to rent a car, you go to a car rental shop and look at the available cars. Then you decide the color, the make, and the model of the car. And you decide when the rental will start and how long you will rent it for. Once you rent it, you can drive it wherever you want with some terms and conditions, right? But can you change the paint of the car to a new color? No, right? Because if you did, you would have to pay some penalties. Then when the rental time is up, you must return the car. But let's say you say, I'm the owner of this car from now on and I'm not going to return it. Then what will happen? There'll be a knock on your door and when you open the door, there'll be law enforcement there. And they'll take the keys of the car from you, whether you like it or not. And then you'll also have to pay some penalties for making a false claim of ownership on a rental car. Now, if you had a valid claim of ownership, it would not be taken away from you. Now, let's talk about your life and body. There's an interesting verse in the Quran, chapter 76, verse 1, where it says, Wasn't there a time on human being when he was a thing unmentioned? So there was a time before your birth when no one had ever mentioned you or even thought about you. You were nothing and did not mean anything to anyone. Now, I want you to run some imagination. Close your eyes and take yourself to the past, to the very first moment when you realized your existence. Where just a moment ago, you were nothing and all of a sudden, you are. That primordial moment that happened to you also has happened to trillions of other beings. You're just one of them. Some of them, when they opened their eyes just like you, they found themselves in deep ocean as fish. You could have been one of them. Some found themselves in the treetops as birds. There are others who found themselves in the depth of earth or in mountain caves as worms. You could have been one of any of them. You just happen to find yourself in a human settlement, most likely in a hospital, as a human being. So did you choose your species? No. Did you choose your gender? No. Did you choose your parents? No. Did you choose which century or decade you would be born in? No. Did you choose any of your physical features? No. All you know is that you found yourself existing on a certain planet at a certain time to certain people as a human being. Now, if you compare your existence with the rental car of the example, at least in the case of the rental car, you could choose the start time, the make, model, color, and the duration of the rental. But for yourself, you had zero say in who you would be. And you don't even know how long you have it for. One day, there'll be a knock at the door. You will open the door and there'll be death there and it will ask you for the keys of your life. You will beg for it for a little more time. Just let me wrap up some stuff and it is not going to give you one more second. It doesn't matter how influential, powerful or smart you are. You could be a billionaire, Einstein or even an emperor who ruled multiple continents. You are not getting one more second. There's a verse in the Quran, chapter 3, verse 168, for a similar situation where it says, Say, when death comes to you, avert it if you are truthful. So, when death comes to you, just say, I guess I'll die another day. It's not my time to go. If you have a true claim of ownership on your life, you should not have to give it up and you should be able to keep it on your own terms. 
but that's not the case. Your life will be taken, your body will be recycled back into the system whether you like it or not, and you don't even know what's after that for you. And that time is coming for sure. So your claim of ownership of your own existence is even less valid than if you made a claim of ownership on a rental car. The true ownership lies high above with the Lord. As Quran says, chapter 2, verse 156, indeed, we belong to God and indeed to him we will return. And if you read Quran, you'll see that what God wants from you is to stop making that false claim of ownership, realize your true owner and surrender yourself to the Lord, which is what Islam means. And God is not a stranger trying to impose a personal agenda on you. Quran says chapter 29 verse six, and whoever strives only strives for his own soul. Indeed, God is free from needs of the world. God has nothing to gain or lose whether you follow his law or not. God is the originator of your life and God knows what's best for you. For example, when a dad tells his kid to stop playing Roblox and finish his homework first, the short-sighted kid might not like it, but that's what's best for his future. The problem here is our selfish impulses which stem from greed, lust, and our own ego worship and these impulses are never satisfied. They always come back and ask for more and put so much pressure and burden on us that we start breaking God's law and exploiting others to fulfill our out of control impulses. For some temporary insignificant and mundane personal gains, we spread corruption and evil on God's earth. You just have to realize that this is not your dominion. You are living in your Lord's garden and trespassing boundaries is not allowed here. You have to realize that the creation of heavens and earth is not all about you and it was not done for your personal pleasure. There are trillions of other beings also living in God's kingdom. The goal of the divine law is to strike a balance and fairness on God's earth so that all can live their lives in peace. This peace is achieved when human beings respect God's law above their own selfish impulses. And that's what Islam teaches. Asking for freedom from God is like a leaf saying, I want to detach and free myself from my tree. I want to fly in the air. When the leaf detaches itself, it does fly for a little while, but then it falls down, dries up and dies. Whereas the other leaves that stick with their tree last long and prosper. Therefore, this idea of my life, my body, and my choice is a shallow and misleading concept. You should not fall for its trap and instead submit to God's will and seek God's pleasure in your actions because that will free you from your impulses and that is true freedom. It will bring lasting peace to your heart and that's what Islam is. Thank you so much and may God bless you.